Hallelujah, Jesus. Title of this message, God gave me a few nights ago, about three o'clock in the morning, he woke me up. And I remembered a song that I think it was Rusty Goodman wrote is Had It Not Been. And that's the title of this message, Had It Not Been. And of course, this last week, Monday and Tuesday of this is 2023, uh, there was a celebration of Purim, which was a time of the, in the book of Esther, if it had not been for Esther being obedient to her cousin or uncle, or whoever Mar Mordecai was, to her, and, and to God's plan put in place to save the Jews, all the Jews would have been annihilated. That would mean Jesus wouldn't have been born. And because of the Jews, we are, Jesus is our salvation. Jesus is a Jew. It, and he came 400 years later from that point. But I found too, but even within 200 years earlier than Esther, Isaiah prophesied about the promise of the Messiah. And even from the time that he would come and save and deliver, he describes what he looked like and what what suffering he would have to go through to bring about salvation. And it was a time even God promised back during Adam. So even though the enemy, through Haman and through other people trying to kill the Jews, trying to destroy God's people, and even today, trying to destroy God's people, God still comes through because he's going to let his promise come forth. All right, his uh, first scriptures in Isaiah 53, 4 through 7, describing what Jesus went through. Surely our griefs he himself bore and our sorrows he carried, yet we him ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. The chastising for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall upon him. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to a slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers, so he did not open his mouth. No matter what Christ went through, he did it because he loved us. God is a God of hope and love. When things may look bleak and bad and, and down, just like there with uh, Esther, when it looked like that the Jews were going to be annihilated, God always comes through. Both the, both the times of Esther and Isaiah, things were looking bad, and things didn't seem, didn't look like salvation would come, but God's plan is still happens his promises will come to pass and things were looking bad and things didn't look like salvation would come but God had promised from the time of Adam up until the, that he was going to send us his a Messiah he's going to send Messiah and it happened to be who he picked was his very own son to die to suffer and die and if you read some of the other scriptures and things in the Bible, it talked about all the horrible things that Christ went through just so we can have salvation. Just And I'm going to describe some things just so we can have that abundant life, just so we can have peace, just so we can have love. He, he suffered and died the most horrible death. <clears throat> And he, God sent his only son to do the job. What if God had not done that? Had it not been for God sending his son, 
what would we, where would we be? Even Jesus, when he did come, had prayed in the garden before he was crucified and suffered and asked the Lord to please change his mind. I, he knew ahead of time what he was going to have to go through. He saw even the situations with different crucifixions that were happening at that time. The Romans had concocted the most horrible death and crucifixions ever imagined. Most of them were tied to a cross, but he was nailed. He was nailed through his wrist. He was nailed through his ankles to the side of the cross in a rugged truck cross. He was beat beyond recognition. His body was drained possibly of all his blood he ever had, but he struggled on just for us. He prayed that it might ha God might take it away, but think about it. What if he didn't go through with it? What if? Had it not been for that crucifixion, where would we be? Jesus knew what he was about to suffer, but he did it anyway, just for you and I. All right. Here's when he was asking God to change his mind, change the situation. It's found in Matthew 26, 39, Luke 22, 42. But I'm going to read out of Mark 14, 36. And he was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what will you will. What if Christ didn't go through with being crucified? What if Jesus, Esther didn't, didn't do what her part in the saving of the Jews? Think about it. Had it not been for those events, and finally, Christ saying yes to his suffering, where would we be? This song came to my mind, and this is, I'm just going to read you the script, had it not been. But the course goes, had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary, that Mount Calvary, that place that Jesus died. Had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for the man called Jesus, then for my ever my soul would be lost. We would not have a chance for heaven. But we're willing. I'm so glad that he took that bitter cup. And he prayed. Fought, he prayed, let, let it pass for me. But he could have called heaven's angels to change. You know, 10,000 angels could have sat, uh, taken him from the cross. He, should have, he could have had miracles because he was a God's son. He could have not had to go through so much, but he did it for us. Because of what Christ did in the suffering and dying, he made provisions for us for salvation from sin and so much more. Here's a list of a few of the things he gave us, the things he'd done for us. He did, gave us salvation and forgiveness of sin. John 3, 16, everybody can quote that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We have forgiveness and we can go to heaven because of his, that was the most important thing he did. But he did much more. He gave us love. He showed his love for us by dying the most horrible death created by man. John 15, 13. Greater love hath no one than this, that one would lay down his life for his friends. Peace. He gave peace. He brought peace. Think about it. In the midst of turmoil, even today, the midst of turmoil and the thought of wars and rumors of wars and all these things, but he can give us peace. John 14, 27, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So he gives us peace. A peace that passes all understanding, as it says in another scripture. He gives us joy. John 17, 13. 
But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. We might have not a earthly kind of a joy or happiness that we might find on earth in relationships and families and and monies and all that, but it's a pure joy of the spirit of knowing that love that he can give. He also brought his glory. John seventeen twenty two. The glory which I give have given which you talking to God, which God had given me, I have given to them. And they may be one just as they we were one. So he wants his glory not only for us to feel his presence, but so that we can be one in the spirit, one in in the anointing, one in his kingdom, in the spiritual things. So we can do mighty and great things because being oneness, being together in everything, having oneness together, we can do accomplish much. Abundant life. You've heard that so many times. He come to give us life and life more. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, but he has come to give life and more abundantly. Many may think that means financially. Many may think it means other uh, physical blessings here on earth. But that abundant life is a spiritual life. A life of peace, happiness, joy, uh, long-suffering, kindness. All the fruits of the Spirit that he had for us. And much more. That we might be walking in blessings and his blessings, not our human blessings here on earth but it's abundant life of spiritual things he also brought it made it possible for us to have victory and an overcoming life he showed his victory of overcoming when he was alive but most importantly the victory that finalized things knowing that he was an overcomer and that there's victory over Satan and over death and hell and demons, he was resurrected. From the grave, John, 1 John 5, 4 through 5, For whatever is born of God, he overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? He brought the Holy Ghost. John 14, 26. He told the disciples when he left this earth, when he died and left this earth. He says, I'm for John 14, 26, but the helper or the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, which the Father will send in my name to take his place. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said unto you. He will teach you. He'll guide you. He'll give you the anointing, the power, the strength to do all that Jesus did. Because Jesus says, go about doing all that I have done and greater. And you can't do those greater things with the, whole, the Holy Ghost and the anointing in your life. <clears throat> he sp brought spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was blessed, has blessed us and every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. All kinds of spiritual blessings he has come to give us. Teach us all the things that we have. We learn it here on earth and we take it along when we go up to heaven. We become because of his death and resurrection. Adopted sons and daughters. Ephesians 1.5 He predestined us to be. To us to adoption as sons. And I'll say also daughters through Jesus Christ to him according to the kind intention of his will. 
He, we are no longer servants. We're no longer saved, but we're adopted in as sons and daughters of him because of Christ. We can become friends of him because with him because of what he did. John 15, 15. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have get, called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. We become his friends. We become his disciples. We become his uh, sons and daughters and have a abundant life. Why? Because of the cross. Because he did do the cross. So because of what he done, and not saying it had, had he didn't, you know, the title had it not been, but because he had done it, he came and died, we can have abundant life in him and go to heaven to be with him. Had he not done that, where would we be? Where would you be? Where would your life be? Sometimes I think about it. If Christ hadn't come to change my life years ago, where would I be? What kind of life would I live? What kind of things would I have? Who would I, what would I be like? But I'm so glad he did. And if you do not know Jesus as your personal Savior, you don't know and know that salvation that he gives on the cross for your sins. All you have to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Change, I want a changed life. I want a new life. I want things that to be part of you. I want to go to heaven, get away from, and have that peace, that pure love. Because when he gives love, he gives that liquid love. That love that just undescribable in our lives. So get to know him. So you can't say had it not been. He did. He did it for you. And you can say he did it.